three minutes ago made it interesting. But they're also still without one of their top players, Zach Scott, senior from Miami, has missed two games in a row with the flu. And on the Tennessee side, Josiah Jordan James will not see action tonight. He continues to nurse a knee injury. McNeese gets on the floor after it. Harwin Francois with the takeaway. Here's a look at the Cowboys starting five. Two and five on the season, four and ten in the Southland last year. They are 0 and 36 all time against AP top 25 teams. A lot of defensive numbers that are impressive for Tennessee over the course of this still young season. Just about any one you look up, and that one called a kick in a McNeese turnover. And that's a big reason why Tennessee is so good defensively. They can hold their own at every position, even on the switch. Shoemate is a guy we highlighted in the open here at 6'7", 205. Vescovy just holds his own down low and forces the bad pass and turnover. Well, Tyreek Key running the point. Tennessee gets it inside quickly to Plopchic and the feed and jam for the freshman Julian Phillips. How impressive has he been to start this season getting better and better each game. So active 15 feet and in, whether it's crashing glass or making a nice cut like McDonald's. he did right there. McDonald's All-American in high school. Trey English, sophomore from Baltimore, has been Having a breakout season for McNeese. That's number one in the light blue. A McNeese team that has really struggled from a shooting standpoint. Francois off the mark from three. And an offensive rebound. Now Vescovy finds it. SEC player of the week. Top ten in minutes played per game. He gives Rick Barnes 33 minutes per contest. It's a big East team that's going to play a lot of zone. you got to be able to make the right read and pass. Conwell with a couple bad passes earlier to start this game. Best can be challenged and got the block. How about the hang time for 25 and White? A spin and a block on the other side. Rejected by Thomas. Well, this is what you call get back, hustling. I'm not sure Vescovy expected the block, but he realized he was hanging a little longer than the opponent said. Why don't I go ahead and bat this way while I'm up here? McNeese with the answer on the other end with a block of their own. McNeese playing one of their bye games. They got four games against top 25 opponents this season and paired this one with a trip to Martin. And we got one against Uros Plavcic. So that's his first. McNeese against Martin a couple nights ago started hot. Cowboys hit six of their first seven. They had a 14 to 6 lead. That went away late. Tom, you see the early substitution with Jonas Adu, who has given this Tennessee team a ton of really good minutes. Terrific rim protector. And just comes in ready to play. Has an impact on the game. Phillips with the rebound. Be interesting to see the minutes at the five spot for Tennessee between Adu and Plavcic with Kamwa playing a little bit of five when necessary, too. Look for Kamwa to be open here in the middle. He's got to turn around and make the right read. It's a new zone for McNeese this year. It is, as of now, a terrible zone, to be frank. But their head coach, John Aiken, said it is a work in progress. Once we get to the league, we think it'll it'll really work. We're committed to it. Now, that might mean it looks bad at times tonight. But so far, they've held Tennessee just one for three. Well, you got to think big picture if you're McNeese because... Hey, you're likely a 16 seed if you win your conference tournament. So these are the types of matchups you're going to have if you get into the NCAA tournament. And you just got to keep working on your game. Think big picture. Be ready for conference play. Shot clock late. Trey English to the rim. And a rebound shuffle right to McNeese. And a put back there for DeAndre Thomas. Right, that's an old rule right there. Is never save it under your own basket unless you know for sure what you're doing. Sloppy play. Oh, big time play. Took it right out of the hands of Jonathan Massey. Massey thought there was more arm than ball on that one. I'm not sure I don't agree with him. Kamwa cut off, kicks it into the corner, and that's in and out. One of the numbers to watch tonight will be, even with the slow start, Tennessee's assist. McNeese allows the... One of the largest assist rates in college basketball. And Tennessee has one of the best assist rates on the offensive end. 
Well, I think you're going to see more of that when number five at the scores table, Zakai Ziegler, comes in to run the show because their offense is just so much better with the natural point guard and their leader on the court in Ziegler right here. Opponents assist on 72% of their buckets this season against McNeese. Tennessee is sixth in the, by the way, that's dead last. Tennessee is sixth in the country in assist rate. It's a kind of a weird zone, right? It'll look like a 1-3-1 one, one at times. Other times look like a 2-3. And, and that's a byproduct of that assist rate is, is in the zone. You're going to get some of those open looks, typically off the pass, not a lot of one-on-one -on -one plays. By the way, it's got a Tennessee flavor to it, right? Where the zone was found, former Tennessee coach Donnie Tindall. There's Ziegler for three. Well, Donnie Tindall would be mad right now, given that open three. But, yeah, this came from Chipola Junior College. Where they picked this up, and Tennessee fans remember it was a short tenure with Donnie Tindall, but that zone was effective, something he put in with Kenneth Faree to keep him out of foul trouble back at Moorhead. Brandon Shingles was an assistant coach, uh, probably played with Fareed at Moorhead, and he's an assistant that's installed it now with McNeese. Tennessee slow start offensively, but Ziegler wasting no time making an impact. And he splashes one down. Volunteers lead by three. Shooting down the stretch as well. Uh, they have. And I think one thing that really separates this Tennessee team is, yes, they look their best when shots are going in and they're connecting from deep. But they can survive scoring droughts because their defense has been so consistent over the years. It's like that, a shot clock violation. And McNeese will fall back into the zone. Let's talk a little bit more about what McNeese looks like in this zone and where Tennessee wants to go against it. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of a 1-1-3, one, one, and then it can shift to a 2-3. But the biggest thing is to try to get right where that SEC logo is, right where Kamwa is flashing his hands and work from there. He's got to turn around and look at the basket. I mean, he, he's open for that 12-footer. McBarnes talking about the attack today offensively said, you know, there's some people who don't like the 10-footer and say that's a low efficiency look. Well, that Jonas Adu dunk is highly efficient. And Barnes was countered that. And he said, I think it's a great look from 10 feet. You're going to hit a turnaround jumper there. Yeah. And it's something that he went up against a lot when he faced Coach Bayheim's teams at Syracuse. He said, look, most of my zone plays all go way back to the ACC days. Poked away by Zakai Ziegler. That might come in handy next year, right? When the ACC SEC wow. challenge kicks off. Well done. Yeah, here's some big to big passing. Adu keeps it high. It's the little things. I mean, for the young kids at home, Adu never brought that ball down. He caught it high, went straight up with it. Make the game easy. It's by Mayshek on the floor now for Tennessee. Volunteers still without Josiah Jordan James. He's missed the last handful of games with a lingering knee issue. And Barnes has said, we don't want anyone to play if they are uncomfortable. I'm waiting for that health. Three straight turnovers for the Cowboys. Here's Ziegler, and he double dribbled. Sloppy play by Tennessee with the turnovers. I'm going to go back to Mayshack that you mentioned. I, I thought it was a really important tournament for him. I mean, he provided a big spark off the bench for Tennessee. This was a guy that you thought might kind of get lost in the shuffle, but with Josiah Jordan James out, it opened up opportunities and minutes for him and showing why he's one of the most improved players on this roster. That is the fourth consecutive turnover now for McNeese. They came in averaging 14 and a half a game. John Aiken took over for Heath Schroyer, who was his assistant. Schroyer now the athletic director at McNeese. Had a couple stops as a head coach. Schroyer did. And the Matha guy. It's a convenient way to promote from within, huh? That's right. If you, you take the head coaching job, I'll take the AD job. A Tennessee turnover, fifth of the game for the Volunteers. Well, all these guys, Kamwa, Phillips, when they get it in the middle, they, they got to be ready to play ball. Beautiful finish by Malachi Rhodes. Adu gives it up. Ziegler with the pump fake. And that ends up being a three on two and a foul on the Cowboys. Well, here we're going to see Rhodes take advantage and transition here. And just barely able to get an angle. That's a tough two over an enormous wingspan of Adu, but finds a way to get it in with the left. 
and so Jonas Adu goes to the free throw line. Product out of Durham, North Carolina. Found more playing time late last season. Kama was injured the first week of February. Yeah, his coming out party was was against Kentucky. So he had five points, seven boards, three blocks. That was in just 18 minutes going against Oscar Shibwe. Adu knocks it in. Tennessee with an 8 4 lead. For all the football fans that are just now tuning into basketball, Shibwe is back. So if you think you got rid of him, you haven't. And Kentucky's still trying to figure things out with the new team as well. And so I think a lot of Tennessee fans look back to that Colorado loss, and, and that's still uh, on their minds a little bit. But. Very few teams have been perfect this season. And some that are have surprised. Missouri and Mississippi State, to name just a couple. Adu with the block, 18 seconds left on the shot clock. And those are two teams in the SEC with new coaches that have gotten off to undefeated starts. Missouri will get its first true test. They won on the road at Wichita last night. They get SEMO coming up, and then they uh, take on Kansas. Not this Saturday, but next Saturday. So that'll be their first big test. Yeah, I think Missouri, Mississippi State undefeated so far. Ole Miss just one loss. Those were some of the teams nobody was really talking about coming into SEC play. Playing a lot better. Christian Shoemate returns to the floor for McNeese. He has yet to score. He's a preseason conference. Oh, and another McNeese turnover. Tennessee has really been successful lately with this out of bounds pressure whether it's sidelines out of out of bounds baseline out of bounds creating some turnovers They use a lot of length on the inbounds passer down in the Bahamas They lead the country in adjusted defensive efficiency according to Ken Palm at one point They had the best defensive efficiency in the history of Ken Palm that means they give up Less than 84 points per 100. And anytime you're number one in the country, that's uh, that's impressive. Yeah, you hold teams to 55 a game, yeah, you're going to be winning more times than not. And I think what's so impressive is right here, you're looking at just the ball pressure, the ability to guard your man one-on-one. -on -one. There's help there, but they don't require help. Massey for three. That's off the mark. Adu. Took the collision, and that one will go against Christian Schumann. We've seen a few times now they do just using his God given abilities. I mean, nine foot four standing reach. You saw him dunk one, you saw him block one. That time he rebounds it. He's just making the game simple and, and doing the little things, using that height and size and wingspan to his advantage. Tennessee struggled in the game against USC against that zone went just three for 18 for three and shot 38% from the floor And this a much different zone look has also given Tennessee troubles And that's Tyree key the Indiana State transfer out of Clay County High School with the miss Francois no and a rebound Pulled down no numbers for Tennessee Massey got his hands in there and then Meshack eventually draws the foul. That's the first on Trey English. Skate stuck in the mud early on. Dane, can you pretty it up? Make it better. Get Swanson. a win. It's called Triple A. Get us out. <laughs> Epic deals. Schedule for Cowboys. Well, you got to get some of those buy games to support your school. They're going to get their money's worth with those. And what an experience for these guys to be able to play in those arenas. But it, it's going to be tough. This is a team that was kind of depending on Rashad Bolton a transfer to come in really help them at the point guard spot he's got a stress fracture still figuring out and then of course their best three-point shooter Zach Scott unavailable right now but should be back soon McNeese comes away with the black Bolton with a shin injury he was a 30 game starter at Southern Miss last year Walker Timmy drew Timmy's little brother is also on the team he didn't make the trip he's away for personal reasons right now so the Cowboys like a lot of folks dealing with all sorts of issues and there's an offensive foul on Jonathan Massey Tyree key known more as a scorer, but that time shows you why He's getting so much playing time just steps in front of the cutter takes a charge This is just but when you ask coach Aiken, hey 
What stands out to you the most on film about this Tennessee defense? The first word is physicality. I mean, they blow up screens, and that's an example of it right there. Volunteers on the offensive end, just three for nine so far tonight against this McNeese zone. Blatchett's back in the game. They go to the short corner. It's another block for the Cowboys. Conwell's having a frustrating start. I mean, he's just got to read the defense better. He's deciding what he's going to do before it actually opens up, and that jumper just was not there. Ziegler finds Phillips in transition. When Tennessee is going well, what's the best part about their offense? Uh, it's the inside out. I mean, that's that ball never went inside, and that's a shot that Coach Barnes says, hey, we can get that any time in the shot clock. I want it inside the paint, then out. And after a couple of touches, Vestby throws down the three. I'm going to count, count that as an inside out because the offensive rebound yeah, to fit my narrative. Vescovy put up 14 threes in the Kansas win. That was the most in the SEC this year. Ziegler commits a foul. It's his first, second on Tennessee. You won't see it as much with this zone from McNeese, but, I mean, teams are just all over him. And if he can ever just get any breathing room, he's going to get it up. And... His team relies on I think it was four straight possessions in the Kansas game where, where he let it ride. And and you love that confidence from him and his teammates and the message from Coach Barnes that says, hey, you're barely going to be open. When you are, you got to let it fly. Blobchich with the kick. It'll stay with McNeese with 13 on the shot clock. To wrap that point up, Vescovy could not throw it in the ocean in the Bahamas there against USC, but came up with a clutch three-pointer when they needed the most down the stretch. It's pretty easy to throw it in the ocean when you on an island. I set you up for that. I knew it was coming. You're so predictable. It's Trey English. I'm basic. Thanks for the latte. <laughs> His best could be now. Well, McNeese doing a good job getting back in the zone, even in transition. But Tennessee had Conwell early in that possession, and they had the deep post position, and they never looked down low. And the ball pressure results in the second personal on Trey English, and that's not what McNeese was looking for. He's been one of the better players so far. He's coming off of a 29-point performance against UT Martin. Had five assists in that one. He had 29 of their 86, and he'll have to take a seat. He's really been shooting it well from deep. Not so much a year ago. Had a little bit of a wrist injury and just going through some of those freshman struggles, but off to a great start in his sophomore season. They joined the team late last year, then had the wrist. Here's Ziegler. Now back to Vescovy. And if you think that one was from too deep, you, you got to go see their practice court where they have a four point line. And that's where they want their spacing and want their shooters to be comfortable. Letting it fly. You remember Jock Jams? Jock Jams, yeah. Yeah. I mean, a uh, Rock and Jock, the yeah, MTV show. Yeah, they yeah. would put all sorts of labels out there on the floor. You could just shoot it from anywhere and get bonus points. Yeah, I prefer slam ball uh, <laughs> over that. But, yeah, there's the pressure. And good job by Tennessee. No, there's there. really not a weakness out there defensively. Everybody can guard their own. Plotchic gets fouled by Harwin Francois. You're sitting next to a guy who called slam ball at one point in his career. Did you really? Yeah. You should feel honored. Thank you. XFL slam ball. Hope the SEC's not going under <laughs> two. <laughs> Tiddlywinks. Rosh Plotchic at the free throw line. It's just two for four on the season now. We got one women's game, and it's a good one. NC State against Georgia. That's Monday night. Diamond Boston leads 7 1 Georgia against Diamond Johnson in the 12th ranked Wolfpack. That's at Stegman in Athens, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Plopchic knocks them both down. McNeese uses the timeout. Now Tennessee has put together a 6 nothing run. 14 from the floor. Coupled with eight turnovers. 
and I like this move by Coach Barnes. Showing a little bit of pressure here to, to get that flow established like we talked about. Get a little better pace to this game. Ziegler will man up Donovan O'Day. He's a freshman. And the Cowboys nearly gave another one away. Shot clock at four. Now it's at one. And another shot clock violation. Well, the, the freshman O'Day, number two, I don't know if he'll have a more welcome to college basketball than coming in the game and having Zakai Ziegler just all over you defensively. And that's really what created the shot clock violation was the sloppy play up front in the first 25 seconds of that possession. Last eight possessions for McNeese, 0 for 4 with four turnovers. Ziegler gets cut off. Here's Vescovy. And a second three for Santiago Vescovy. Yeah, and such a good job by Ziegler because Tennessee's game plan was try to hit the high post in the middle. McNeese counters and takes that away. So Ziegler says, okay, you're going to take that away. Let's get the penetration with the dribble if we can't get it with the pass. Now a 9 nothing UT run. Nice slice by Trey English, who's playing with two fouls here in this first half. That's such a difficult move right there. I mean, he got past three defenders, got past the second layer, then finally at the rim. Nice layup. Turnaround off the mark by the freshman Julian Phillips. And a foul on the Cowboys, Malachi Rhodes. It'll be his second. Penetration kills, and here's Ziegler, their floor leader, finally open man and sharpshooter, Vescovy. But it, it really doesn't matter who's on the court. It, for Tennessee, they are playing you straight up man-to-man -man, no matter what. And, and the amount of turnovers that they force, this is a team that's third in the nation right now getting steals on 17% of their possessions and that creates all these live ball opportunities but this is also a team that doesn't gamble a lot now, i think last year they had a lot of steals and kennedy chandler was really great at it as well but yeah. his were more of uh, what i would call sort of the Allen iverson type you know taking gambles and maybe getting lost defensively a little bit where you'd have some breakdowns as a trade-off with that this team much more solid than last year's on the half court defensive end Ziegler gets beat off the bench, off the bounce just as you're appraising their defense. English has four. And meanwhile, Tennessee running the other way in a turnover. Well, English gonna do a nice job here, just kind of putting his head down and says, All right, let me get past them. Be physical driver. They're physical defenders. Be a physical driver and go right at them. And on the other end, you know, Vescovy likes to get it in that secondary break when they advance past, but sometimes he does get his head down and kind of get under out of control when he's attacking the basket. Ziegler gave up that last bucket. Opponents only shooting 29% against him in man-to-man -man situations. That is elite defense. Shot clock at six. English crossed him over and they lost the handle on it. Vescovy tried to save it, but went off of. Oh, uh, English must have been on the line. So Tennessee basketball. This is a nice poke from behind, and even if he got past Ziegler, there's Adu right there, and then Vescovy taking away that baseline pass to the corner. And what do you think is Tennessee's best or most efficient, however you want to characterize it, offensive lineup this season? Uh, I think we've yet to see it against the best competition. It would include Josiah Jordan-James. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if there's times this year where you have James right there where Adu is and have him at the five. Because you're not going to give anything up size-wise and rebounding-wise given James' build. Phillips has shown to be a really aggressive 
rebounder, both offensively and defensively. And so it's not going to work every game, but don't be surprised if that five-guard lineup doesn't show up from time to time. Yeah, so that would be Phillips at the four by by label, but I, I know kids sometimes get friend oh man, I'm a three. I don't play the four. I'm a three. Well, hold on. We can go small and you can play positionless basketball. Josiah Jordan James is giving him 14 points a game when he's on the floor. He's only played in three games so far this year. This will be his fourth straight missed. Block. And another. And Adu comes down with it. Here's Key. He'll let it fly. The Prada Salina misses, but Phillips is there to rebound, and he draws the foul. And that is the first on DeAndre Thomas. And there he is. He's second on the team with 13 offensive rebounds coming into the game. And he just doesn't give up. And he keeps battling down low, extremely active on the glass. So here's Julian Phillips. Blythewood, South Carolina, just outside of Columbia, then spent a year at Link Academy in Branson, Missouri, on the grounds of Camp Canacuck. He's got another one coming. I've not heard Camp Canacuck. I went there once. I've kind of figured you did. I did. I went once, and I remember they messed up the assignments. My best friend Derek was not in my cabin. It was a really <laughs> tough welcoming, but we got through it. Did you see the girls from Canacomo? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I was too distraught that I <laughs> had to actually meet new people and new friends. As he tried turning the corner, that's a nice-looking move. No finish. Got his own miss. And he's playing hard on the offensive end, but... Cowboys of Magnese just four for 20. And that one falls off. Tyreek Key will go to the line, shoot two. This all starts with the defensive stop and a great advance pass. Key, such a talented scorer. This is a guy they, they want to be even more aggressive. I, I think he's held himself back a little bit in terms of looking for his own shot because of some of the point guard duties he's had to take with, with James being out. But make no mistake about it, this guy is a bona fide scorer and has been his entire life. An absolute legend. Led the Valley in scoring 17 points a game last year. He was their number one option. He took 28% of the team's shots when he was on the floor. This is a much different role now for Tennessee. But I don't think he's just a scorer when he has volume shooting on his side. I think he can be much more efficient than we've seen so far out of him. And you could see all the rave reviews from his teammates and coaches in the offseason. And he just puts his head down and works. That's what they love most about him. John Aiken was looking for a goaltending call. Here's Key. Wow! Oh. Tried to go Dr. J on us hey. and reverse that thing in from him. You almost get half a point just for the attempt. Wow. And not really known as being an incredible athlete, but shows you the hang time to come all the way around and almost gets it in. Uh, that would have been a sports center top 10 moment. But, you know, Coach Barnes took him out a couple times in the Bahamas where he turned down some shots and said, no, we got to add you looking for yours. Another one coming for Julian Phillips. You think Julian got his roommate correct? Canica. <laughs> he can get whatever he wants. He can get his own cabin when you're a five star. <laughs> this is an area where he's really excelled too, is, is at the free throw line. So but naturally you're more aggressive in the paint. You're more aggressive on those offensive rebounds. You're seeking out the contact when you're confident at the free throw line. If you're not shooting it well from the stripe, human nature is you avoid contact zone. That ball was tipped. Magnese keeps possession. Vols seven of their last 13 points have come from the free throw line. I'm expecting a blob reference out of you with all these camp. <laughs> it's got to happen at some point. I don't know when, but it's got to happen. <laughs> Wide open and Miss Bunny. Meshack will try it again. Are you king of the blob? <laughs> I, I was... Uh, you, you always, you loved everybody in camp, but you just hope kind of the, the big kid was behind you in line, right? You needed the big ball.
it's been a tune up. My May Shank at the free throw line, sophomore out of Fontana, California. This guy respects his elders. Uh, he's got a nice 23 necklace. And I asked him to verify. I was like, you know, you wear 15, it's 23 for what I think it is. He goes, oh, yeah, George, my favorite player. Wow. A lot of guys that age might go with, with, with Kobe. I know. His dad played on some pretty good Loyola Marymount teams back in the late 90s and was a thousand point scorer. There's a turnover. Just the ball pressure there, how hard it is just to make the first pass to initiate your offense, even if they catch it. They're all the way over there by our buddies Bob and Burt. Bob and Burt. They should have a cartoon. Here's Vescovy. In and out. Adu gets blocked. We'll try it again. <laughs> Just keeping it high. Adu giving them some really solid minutes in this game. Clear advantage down low. Adu commits the foul. That's his first. How about him on the offensive end? He is at 6'11, the sophomore out of Durham, North Carolina. Just continuing to use his motor. Gets a little surprised by the block. Says, no problem. I'll stay patient. Keep it high. That time shows he's ambidextrous with the left. Malachi Rhodes at the free throw line. This is a, a league, by the way, with some really good bigs, right? I mean, you have the reigning national player of the year in Oscar Shibwe, who is back. Colin Castleton. Back for another run at Florida. You're going to need Tolu Smith at Mississippi State. That's my guy there. You know I'm high on Tolu Smith. And Chris Jans has those guys playing some ball. That, that's that's an underrated defensive team right now. They hadn't let anybody score over 55 on them. He's a beast down low. Had a big win against Marquette a couple of weeks ago that didn't look that impressive. And then Marquette ran Baylor out of the building last night. But, but to your point on, on the importance of the front court, not only in in this league but in the entire country and that's really what the Achilles heel was for Tennessee last year a lot is made of the inconsistent three-point shooting but they could never really impose their will the way coach Barnes wants to down low and I'm not sure that it's gonna be one guy for Tennessee as much as it's gonna be a unit with Kamwa, Adu, and Plovsic with 10 to 15 minutes spurts apiece volunteer shooting just 27 percent to start this game Trying to find a rhythm offensively. There's Kamal steps back from mid range. He's got a really nice touch from out there and playing the best basketball of his career last year. Before that injury at South Carolina, I certainly think he can get back to that level of play. Meshek pokes it away. He's a good face up here. He had one blocked early in the game on a similar situation, but this time he realizes he's got a little bit more space, smaller defender, smarter read, better result. I think the bigger picture conversation there's a five second violation about bigs in college basketball as it said we've seen a major shift over the last few years nil money certainly helps with bigs coming back to school because the nba doesn't like old school fives they don't want back to the basket centers anymore so it's ed at purdue or oscar at kentucky like, there's more room for true post players in college basketball than there ever has been yeah, and you're right and college is able to retain that talent now with the nil and you know the, i think adjustments made too it, it used to be okay if there's a big man on the court let's put him in ball screen get him away from the basket but now you have what's called drop coverage where the big man kind of stays in the paint a little bit yeah. and, and they've made adjustments to where you kind of force him in when i played it was greg odin at ohio state that was a guy we used to like to get out in ball screen situations coverages have gotten smarter and better so julian phillips has another free throw coming he is three for five sunday at eight eastern on the sec network our latest episode of true south john t edge travels around brunswick and st simon's island georgia meeting the locals listening to music eating good food and talking about the south you can only find these shows on the sec network and the espn app st simon's island georgia here's your weird fact is further west than cleveland ohio and it's on the coast. Says who? It's, that it's on the coast? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Rand McNally? 
Shot clock laid again for McNeese. Challenge three doesn't draw iron another shot clock violation. The, the empty possessions are just staggering for McNeese. I mean, four of 23. They're going to call that one, of course, a, a shot clock violation. Never touched around and this three pointer and then uh, just turning it over all over the place as well. 13. Tennessee forces nearly 20 turnovers a game. They're on the pace for that again. Come on, another mid range J. What a sweet stroke. When, when he was hurt last year, and on crutches, he would sit underneath that basket and just work on form shooting. He was just sitting there with the ball, working on that high release that Coach Barnes has done such a great job of over the years. Everybody from Marcus Aldridge at Texas to Grant Williams. Nice body control and a finish from Christian Shoemate. Speaking of guys that he's worked with, Vescovy goes to the right with the reverse, and Tennessee getting out and running a little bit. Texas, by the way, is up to number two in the country. That's their best ranking since Barnes had him number one in January of 2010. They four NBA guys on that Longhorns roster. That seems like a change that worked for everybody in terms of Shaka Smart and Chris Beard. Shaka Smart seems to be back to his old self with Marquette. It's a great fit there, and Chris Beard, and that guy can coach. Yeah. It was a no brainer, kind of fait accompli that he would end up back at Austin at some point once he started having that success in Lubbock. Ball's only 29 points this half and foul drawn. And that's the second on Jonathan Massey. So McNeese in the second half will have three starters with two fouls, probably four starters with two fouls apiece to start the half. And by the way, this will be the second time this season the UT has held an opponent under 20 points in the first half. They did it against Tennessee Tech to open the year. Here's Tyree Key. He's from Salina, Tennessee, and then he went to Terre Haute, Indiana to play at Indiana State. At one point he said, you know, Terre Haute may not be a big city, but it was like New York City compared to Salina. And that's what Coach Barnes loves about him. He loves these small town kids that just have great work ethic. Quietest guy on the team, but a gym rat. Only one for three from the line. McNeese does not get a shot off. And in the first half, Cowboys held a 23% shooting, including 0 for 7 from three. Here on the ball, passing around, but a little bit stagnant offensively. Foul issues for a handful of Cowboys, including Trey English, who just inbounded the ball's got two. DeAndre Thomas has three. They've got five players with two fouls or more. Kamal challenged that one. And the Cowboys pull down another offensive rebound, and they'll go to the free throw line. Here's the one oddity for McNeese in the first half. Twelve of their 14 points have come in the paint. Well, good job there. They ran not one but two back doors coming out of halftime. Successful on the second one leads to the offensive rebound, and this is an area where they have struggled as a team, though. Christian Shoemate at the free throw line. He's a Chicago native, played at Bloom High School. Talking with John Aiken before the game today. That's one of the reasons we're going to play that game in Iowa State. Get a little bit closer to his hometown of Chicago. Played on a high school team with five. His teammates signed with Division One schools. Phillips thought about the three, and now Kama puts it on the floor, and that's a huge difference from the first half to the second. First half, Kama was getting it right there and just kind of looking at the wings. He never turned around and faced up and looked for his shot first. That time, takes advantage and gets a dunk. Yeah, so there's your halftime adjustment, huh? And well done. I think Kamwa can has the highest ceiling for this season of any of the post players. Maybe a do long term, but for this season, it's 13 and white. Rhodes left the shot short. Here's Vescovy in transition. Well, McNeese has done a great job keeping this game in the lower gears and keeping Tennessee from getting out. Running, Vescovy eventually knocks it down. His third three. Yeah, that's the ball movement you want to see for Tennessee. Penetrate the zone, kick it, swing it, extra pass, get it to your best shooter.
challenge too on the turnaround. Kamal brings it down. And this is going to start with Kamwa actually being the penetrator and kicks it out and then just quick ball reversals. Vescovi knows when he's open, he's got to let it rip. He's playing with so much confidence right now and known as a shooter, but I, I tell you, just his passing, his cutting, his leadership, his defense, he, he makes everybody around him better whether he's touching the ball or not. That foul goes against Jonathan Massey. That's his third. Santiago Vescovi, reigning SEC Player of the Week, got a month of video at Uruguay. He's got another year of eligibility remaining if he so chooses to accept it. A lot of these Tennessee Ball seniors have that extra COVID year available to them at their disposal. Francois commits his second. It's already a Tennessee team. Brings a lot of minutes back from last year's squad. Uh, they are missing John Fulkerson. We got a chance to FaceTime with Folky today over in Belgium. And Rick Barnes saw what we're doing. He came over, got in on the FaceTime, and asked him how the waffles were, and <laughs> what the syrup was like. Yeah. As, as he. As Coach Barnes came over, I, I faked as if Fulkerson had just said uh, they need to feed the postmark. Yeah, I agree, Fulky. Yeah, they need to feed the postmark. Coach doesn't really know what he's doing, but I'll talk to him about it. Playing for the Leuven Bears. He did point out that their team is sponsored by Stella Artois. Got a uh, SEC guy, Kayvon Allen, on his team, former Florida Gator. I kind of wish, based on the way this thing is going, we would have saved the face time for in-game. It would have been a little bit well, more entertaining than this one. Maybe we can save the Stella for in-game. <laughs> we're going to get it a little more entertaining. <laughs> I'll be back next week for Eastern Kentucky. Stacia, can we talk to John Fulkerson during that game, please? 1-3-1 <laughs> one, for McNeese. We'll morph into a couple different looks. They have an assistant now. Thomas Gray in his first season, he was with Kermit Davis at Ole Miss. And when you first saw the zone, yeah. it reminded you a lot of what Kermit does in terms of shifting and moving even within a possession. Yeah, and there's just some roles. When the ball goes in the corner, it can change to a 2-3, a and it comes back out. You switch it back to 1-3-1. One, one. Um, yeah, look, this is, this is a work in progress for Coach Aiken and McNeese. But all in all, you look at it and you say, hey, this is a really talented Tennessee team. We've held them to 38%, 4 for 14 from 3. And the defense hadn't been all that bad. And so that's the positive you take away from this. Splash from the corner for Julian Phillips. This is his second 3 of the season. Came in 1 for 11. He, he doesn't play like a freshman. He doesn't act like a freshman. His body language, his energy looks like a veteran. And... and He's also surrounded by, I mean, even with, uh, you know, you think back to Keon Johnson, Jaden Springer, some of those guys. And wow. Great feed and a foul instead of a finish. Christian Shoemake commits his second. By the way, moments ago, DeAndre Thomas from McNeese committed his fourth. So foul trouble continues for the Cowboys. What a terrific way to run the court. And Bescovy, who's got plenty of point guard skills. Shows you there, and just lucky not to be on a poster for Julian Phillips. Do they still make posters? Fat heads, posters. Yeah. Screensaver, wallpaper. Maybe a meme. Another one coming for Phillips. Yeah, you're talking about all the great recruits that Rick Barnes has pulled in. Here's a McDonald's All American, and remains to be seen, you know, coming in, or I guess on his way out how he would match up with some of those others but and, and you and i have talked before too of just like when you get one of these mcdonald's all americans and you go through so much effort and and oftentimes at other programs it's like hey they're the savior they're the one that's going to take you to the promised land there's so much hype and you look back and the season becomes a disappointment you go man was all that worth it now the kid's gone and did your program even really take a step forward 
Whereas this Tennessee team is surrounding a freshman All-American with all these veterans and returners. And it's just a whole different story when you have this nucleus and culture that's already there. That's the third on Trey English. A couple of guys that come to mind in the SEC. Anthony Edwards when he was at Georgia. Ben Simmons when he was at LSU. Some of the Ben Simmons stuff wasn't known until right. the documentary came out later. But they just, when it's the wrong guy, they soak up so many different resources yeah. that otherwise go to the rest of the program. And they can suck up so much energy. Watch out. Woo! Caught it with the left off the back of the rim. I like that design. Yeah. Rick Barnes has a bag of law plays. And this one, with a better pass, would have been executed perfectly. Although to get the real highlight, you got to throw the pass a little bit off, make them stretch for it. My man was surprised in the student section there. It's play it ended. What new look here, by the way? They got student section on both ends of the court. It's a new look to Thompson Bowling Arena. Did you have a hand in that? Come on, next time one or two. No, I don't have a hand in any decisions. But I buy some popcorn every now and then in a program at the football game. And, <laughs> and if I have an opinion, I'll post it on social media. <laughs> Where it gets the respect yeah, that that's deserved. Yeah, that's the best place I've found to take your your arguments or concerns. Lobchick came out to run a double. And Tennessee has put together a nice little run. And this half, they've outscored the Cowboys 11-2 to since the break. 41-16, Big Orange get 14 or 15 a game in this league all right so my question for you then we're talking about rick barnes being so good against elite teams five straight wins against ap top five opponents if you needed to lean on one score for tennessee this season you know if you needed a superstar to have a big game against a big time opponent who would you give the mantle to that is a great question i think i would lean towards ziegler and Vesco, it's tricky because, like, all right, I'll take it a step further. You got 10 seconds left. Who are you call to play for? Exactly right. right? Yeah. I mean, so I think you can still run your regular offense with their down screens for Vescovy, knowing that if he's got it, he's going to take it. But he's such a smart player. If he doesn't, he can find the open man. Um, but I think that player is likely to emerge as, as Julian Phillips because you can get him in that high post area and get a good inside look as well. You know, Santiago Vescovi is a guy who's going to be at the top of the scouting report. There's Phillips over on the Tennessee bench. Loose ball. Bursey got on the floor for it. Jabari Smith last year for Auburn it was a projected lottery pick all season. But he really didn't turn into a, a full court player, especially with his three point uh, ability to put on the floor, create his own shots, be a threat from 22 feet until the last about three weeks of the season you knew it was there but it took time for him to get there as a freshman it, it did and that's where these guys are going to continue to develop game in game out and, and when you're surrounded by there's another one of those law plays from rick barnes that used to run against Bayheim, still using now but it, it's such a luxury for a guy like julian phillips to be able to come along at his own pace because all the pressure's not on him yeah and you got Josiah Jordan James for most teams you, you take one of your best players and have them out of the lineup I can promise you you're not winning the battle for Atlantis and This Tennessee team just they're they're better with James on the court. You're not winning the battle for Tullahoma yeah. <laughs> Into the corner and that was a quick three Kamwa Tossed it towards the student section, but it is an interesting debate like you know All right, you're running plays at the end, but if you just need an ISO like who can go in there I'm not sure I want it uh, if the balls if, if the clock's winding down 10 seconds It's at the top of the key. I kind of like Ziegler with it just because he can actually get separation get off that 15 footer Also possibly get to the free throw line Separation off the bounce may be a better way to put it Tennessee didn't have to worry about that against Kansas a 14 point win that snapped the Jayhawks nation's best 17 game win streak 
forced Kansas into 32% shooting and 5 of 21 from 3. And Elton Wilson and Dick do their best shooters. A bad shooting night from deep. Adu commits his second personal foul. And Trey English back to the free throw line. Offensive rebound for the Cowboys. Trey English coming off of a career high 29 points. When you see Shoemaker getting the extra possession, he gets three offensive rebounds a game. So you, you can't fall asleep when you're guarding him. Tough fade and good by Christian Shoemaker. Shoemate's a really interesting study. It doesn't take a deep statistical dive, but he's only shooting 29% from the free throw line. His career is sub 50%. Yet he's got one of the best free throw rates in the country. That by Mayshack, which means he gets to the line a lot. As an opponent, it's kind of like, okay, he go there. Yeah, and, and yeah, you, you get hurt with the foul trouble, but your points per possession are probably going to be okay, too, on the defensive end. Look English gets a solo from behind. Out front to Kamwa. Wow. And that just all starts with the harassment by Zakai Ziegler staying in passing lanes, being a pest offensively. And, of course, Olivier Kamwa. From Finland, there's a reason they call. And some of those teams that you nobody was really talking about to start the season is where you might get that sixth, seventh, eighth team in the NCAA tournament. It's all about you know this this non-conference resume you can build because the conference strength of schedule and everything else and the opportunities there are going to take take care of itself given the depth of the league and then your alma mater, Missouri, as you mentioned. Really, really nice win at Wichita State last night. And Des Moines Hodge leading with nearly 17 points a game. They lead SEC teams in scoring better than 90 a game. Plobchich with the foul. Bandy was trailing VCU tonight. And Gross Plobchich will go to the free throw line. I mentioned Missouri get its first true test against Kansas in the renewal of that rivalry. They met again last year for the first time since Mizzou left for the SEC. Klopchich has another one coming. You saw Texas A&M. I thought they kind of had a disappointing uh, performance down in Myrtle Beach relative to what the expectations are for Buzz's team. Yeah, that, that's a team coming into the season with a chip on their shoulder. They, they felt snubbed by the NCAA selection committee last season. They've got just about everybody back besides Q Jackson. Uh, but, yeah, they, they stumbled for sure at the Myrtle Beach Invitational. Their defense was, was not there. Offensively, they weren't sharing the ball. Uh, they'll bounce back. That was also a team that lost, I believe, eight of eight of nine in conference play, and then rallied yeah. as you approach March. So they can get on a run. They'll get it fixed. How was your week in Myrtle Beach, and how many rounds of putt putt did you play? <laughs> I brought my putter. I realized I didn't have to. They got plenty of them: green, <laughs> orange, blue, whichever one I wanted. <laughs> Uh, and a rainbow of colors to choose from with the balls, too. Did you put it in the clown's mouth? I did. I did. And I went uh, I went full uh, Happy Gilmore on it. Airbrush T-shirts. Any investment that you made there? You know, it's a little chilly there it's, uh, on the off day. Um, I think the most successful thing we did with my buddy Rich Hollenberg. Great play-by-play -play guy. I mean, best I've worked with him. Three weeks. Uh, he's really, really good. <laughs> you should watch some tape. <laughs> we went to Tupelo Honey and the Chicken and Waffles. That was a highlight. There you go. I would have taken you to a piano bar at least. Stolen away by Donovan O'Day. And O'Day banks it in. You know, you go in there, throw the guy 10 bucks, have him play Rocky Top 17 times. Yeah. You're schmoozing to the fan base, but we're in the Bahamas together for the Big Blue Madness, and I, I didn't see you being that brave in front of the Kentucky fans at the piano bar. I did not find a piano bar in Bahamar. It was literally in the lobby. You don't oh, remember? That, no, that's not the same. That's a, that's a bar that has a piano in it. Okay. There's a huge difference. Crocodile Rocks is a totally different atmosphere. <laughs> 
contested three over Ziegler forces a miss. And a loose ball. Ziegler flying all over the place. He's got to be tighter with that handle. In traffic, he tries to get the defender on his hip, and he gets a poke behind every once in a while. But nonetheless, Tennessee rolling. Not the prettiest, but a 21-point lead nonetheless. Life is full of ifs. If you see the reliable, if they're going to have a deep run in March. Finn, isn't that where you played professional basketball? No, the, there's not the Finland Seals. Everybody knows the Seals are in Holland. Oh. The Holland Seals. Do you, you know the difference on a map? Yeah, I think so. Give me a map. So let's see. All you have to do is follow the seal barking noise from the fans. <laughs> And you'll get to Holland. <laughs> nice move by Julian Phillips. My family's from Norway, so I know the area well. Can't believe you didn't hook up with the Oslo Otters. That would have been a good team for you. <laughs> yeah, good contest by Julian Phillips. By the way, Tennessee well on its way to another home win. This would put their win streak at 20 straight. They haven't lost at home to an unranked team since December of 28, December 28, 2019 against Wisconsin. These guys have protected the home turf, and you know, Rupp Arena, historically known as the best home court advantage in the SEC, but you've got to look here. You've got to look at Bud Walton Arena, Fayetteville, and, and those are right up there with it. And, of course, Auburn as well. What a difference a few years makes, huh? In terms of getting other sites within the SEC up to that kind of Rupp Arena standard. I mean, you played for a guy who, in Bruce Pearl who brought the energy to this building, previously a mausoleum, and then it kind of came to life, and they've held on to that since. Yeah, several of these schools, and credit their coaches for coming in and exciting a fan base that either just needed a little bit more life or, or were dormant. And, and for many years in, in Auburn's case. But I, I do think that uh, when you look at Bud Walton Arena and, and Thompson Bowling, I mean, those are two arenas that historically you could look at and say, this place is too big. And then it gets filled up, you say, wow, this place is incredible. Yeah, and there's been more of those moments in those arenas. And then you've got some of the smaller college towns like Auburn, where, or even Ole Miss, the pavilion, where, where now people have. You know, athletic departments have started to build the facilities a little bit more to today's, uh, I guess, standards with with what to expect in terms of crowds. I'm looking forward to being at Mizzou two Saturdays from now for that Kansas game with Jimmy Dykes. That will be an atmosphere that they haven't seen in Columbia for some time, going back probably to Michael Porter Jr.'s debut against Iowa State. What was that, five years ago, six years ago? Wow, time flies. You're, you're exactly right. Yeah, they had a good squad a couple years back with, with Drew Smith. They went into the and, top and, uh, 10 in the Jonte COVID Jonte Porter, right? Yep. yep. So my Mayshack commits a foul. That's his first. And I tell you what, I'm really looking forward to what will begin next year, the ACC-SEC Challenge. Talk about some home court advantages in that league, right? Obviously, Cameron Indoor right at the top of the list would be fun if it would be a battle of the orange. Rick Barnes could go see Jim Beheim again. The yeah. largest on campus arena in college basketball at the Carrier Dome. I'm biased. I want to see uh, I want to see Wake Forest. My guy Steve Forbes, former assistant here at Tennessee. He, Jason Shea, Brooke Savage doing a heck of a job with Wake Forest. Gamo commits a foul. That's his first. Barnes, obviously, longtime ACC coach at Clemson. Might be interesting if, you know, just trying to figure out how those matchups come, if they match them up with North Carolina. A little bit of history with the Tar Heels. And, and boy, he, he wasn't taking stuff on anybody. When no. He had that clutch's job. I mean, they, they just... They weren't going to back down and that ruffled feathers, but that's what he had to do to make sure his team knew that it was going to be a different standard and he was going to fight for them. Ziegler from the corner in the second three of the game. And Rick Barnes 
had a team in the 94-95 season at Clemson. They're picked to finish dead last in the ACC. They didn't have a single starter over 6-7. And the offseason conditioning was so tough, a bunch of them quit the team. They called them the Slab Five. That's how hard they worked. They ended up making it to the NIT and then three straight NCAA tournaments. And that was the beginning of the turnaround at Clemson. Got a guy like Zakai Ziegler. You can do a lot of things on the offensive end. Yeah, it's an offense. His second tray ball of the evening. Ziegler getting it done for the balls. Okay, so with the award-winning Geico mobile app, our customers have 24-7 access. <clears throat> about some <laughs> of the quarterbacks that are going to be in attendance. Peyton will be there. Eli will be there. Johnny Manziel will be there. If you had to be responsible for any one of those three guys, which one would you rather shadow? Oh, oh I'd rather shadow Johnny Manziel. Uh, but be responsible <laughs> is a different story. Uh, you think Johnny wears a quarter zip? <laughs> Speaking of football, recently had several opportunities to cover the Vols football program. Give us some some intel on the big win against Vanderbilt and inside the coaches locker room there with Coach Heupel. The Tennessee's pretty good. Yeah. Jalen Hyde is really good. Jonathan Massey knocks down the first free throw. And Joe Milton's come a long way. We did the opener and we were doing a TV hit on the sideline and Milton was warming up on the opposite hash and threw an out route that missed the receiver and hit me in the ankle. And, and that thing ballooned <laughs> oh. to softball side. I was walking with a limp for like three weeks. <laughs> Massey knocks them both down. I love watching that kid play. I mean, kid, guy. Yeah. Man. Incredible athlete. You, you said it to start the season. I think y'all had one of the openers, right? Where you, I just, you said, just said, but you only listened uh, to a third of well, the words that come out of Yeah, you're right. Nice feed. But good finish. One of the things I'll talk about was what are you looking forward to most, knowing it was going to be a blowout and you wanted to see them. Yeah. Right, so. so you're the one that watches every one of our games. Yes, I do. You and Chris Lowe. I, enjoy, I, 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 I texted you. I really enjoyed um, how, how they, uh, they like to defer, right? the first half they feel like they can get an extra possession they feel like they're so good in the two minute that they're the last possession of the half yeah then, then they're good in the two minute yeah. right? which means they're in no rush last possession of the half then get the next one to start and they feel like they can steal one. right they has got another one coming I, I was really interested in talking with Alex Golish last week about how he plans for opposing offenses and he said we don't never go into a game thinking all right we're going to Winning total is going to be 30 or 35 or 40. It's how many possessions am I going to get in this game? Interesting. Cowboys use a timeout here. Yo. You know who won the jump ball tonight? Um, maybe in this game, every possession doesn't matter. I'm going to say Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee won it. You're right. See? Jeff Beard. Win the jump ball. Up 26. No coincidence. <laughs> 20 turnovers for the Cowboys. McNeese dropped the state from the name for the athletics team. Just McNeese. And if there's any question as to the proper pronunciation for the school from Lake Charles, I go with Louisiana native Jimmy Hyams every time. Kind of a hero of mine, so I trust Jimmy. Three ball off the rim. They've had a, a tough goal, but you know, Lake Charles got hit by a couple of hurricanes, Hurricane Laura and Hurricane Delta, a couple of years ago. They didn't have a locker room. Jim wasn't available. They had to practice for a time in local churches, high schools, the rec center. That is a not just an inconvenience that is a hindrance to improving your program but they're committed to basketball there with the athletic director as you mentioned being the former head coach and they won the bid to host the conference tournament they get to host it for the next four years that is 
That could be a big deal. And That's a huge advantage. A one bid league and you get to yeah. host the tournament. Shoemaker will go to the free throw line here. It's a second on Beskidi. I'm going to give you a chance to do something since it's up. 57 31. Read that after this free throw where it says promo four. Go. Do I read promo four? No, just <laughs> the line underneath that. Stay tuned for Out of Pocket with Alyssa Lang and Andrea Carter. They'll take you inside the world of SEC sports. Dot, dot, dot. With laid, oh, no. Okay. Keep yeah. going. With laid back interviews, lots of laughs, and Lang's signature passion for finding the best food the SEC has to offer right after our game at a special time of 9.15 Eastern, 8.15 Central, here on the SEC Network and the Espen app. Oh, God. At, He's so yeah. close. Right. Yeah. I think that might just make a segment on their next show. <laughs> Perhaps well, Alyssa knows show her food. We, we, we have experience. Our sideline reporter on the road with us. Yeah, mayonnaise, coffee, bananas, tacos, donuts, Vescovy off the mark. If you can't find good food on the road in the SEC, you're just not looking, right? Was uh, all right. Y'all had a lot of uh, well, night games. That, were y'all still able to get into a steakhouse after the game? You, Jordan Central Cole, time, Central Time, yeah. Yeah. Malachi Rhodes is done. He fouls out. Okay, give me give me the uh, the top dining experience you had on the road this year. Well, I tell you what, I took Central my time. I took oh, my man. son uh, to Lexington last week, and I told him you can have anything on the menu. We were at Tony's Steakhouse. He wanted the porterhouse for seventy five bucks. I was like, no, we're, we're not doing that. And he goes, how about the dry age ribeye, Dad? It's only 73. I can <laughs> save you two dollars. Vescovy takes a victory lap. That one goes. Blow through my per diem. So did he go with the dry age, or yeah, did you get the it. porterhouse? No, he got right. the dry age. Yeah, jeez. I had to crack. The guy this. even breaks a deal with his own kid. He says you can get everything, anything. Got to honor it. Little baby hook for DeAndre Thomas. You think Littons will be open after the game, or is it a little too late to go over there and get a cheeseburger and some red bell? I bet you could make a call. Maybe some onion rings. Big old burger. Best could be took a shot. Well, that's the last thing you want to have happen in a game like this. That might even just the threat of that would cue the subs after this. Under four, Vescovy getting his stroke going. I mean, th this guy has improved his athleticism so much since he came in. I mean, you guys, were you on the call for his first game here? I was. Thank yeah. you for watching. Yeah. Was a, see, yeah, I follow your career closely. And, you know, he, he struggled to get the ball. It was either me or up. Rich Hollenberg. <laughs> I would have I, I would have taped that one. <laughs> but, you know, he, he struggled to even get it up the court with opposing guards because of the athleticism and the speed that could overwhelm him a little bit. But, I mean, he's just gotten so much faster. The, the elasticity, as G, their great strength coach, describes it. And, and he's worked at it. He's gotten in the weight room and, and really uh, not certainly not just a shooter by any means. 16 points for Vescovy. How's your elasticity? It used to be a lot better. <laughs> Never could get that award in grade school, though. The sit and reach always got me. Like, <laughs> I was money on the pull ups, the shuttle run, and then sit and reach. I was like, a, I was like a six run, foot fifth grader, and I'm not getting the award. All these other kids are. Key for three. First three for Tyree Key. The Tennessee prep record for single season points 1,383. Previous record holder is a guy by the name of Tony Delk. It was pretty good. Yeah, if you break Tony Delk's record, like I said, you're a legend. And Salina, Tennessee knows all about 
Tyreek Key. In fact, they say the home of Tyreek Key is in the county. What's it take to get your name on the town billboard? A few thousand points as a prep. Tyreek Key. This guy, Joe, for Ole Miss, averaging, I believe, over 20 points in their tournament. And of course, Casey Wallace, you've covered him. He just, he may be the best defender in the entire league. Ganjay Thomas has another free throw coming. Brandon Miller, Bama's freshman, is second in the league in scoring. 19 and a half points a game. One of the top three point shooters in the league. He's already knocked down 24 in seven games. Barnes able to go to the bench a little bit. Tobey Awaka looking to post up. B.J. Edwards, freshman out of Knoxville Catholic, is on the floor. Ziegler shares it. And a foul from Roberts. Bursey is his second. B.J. Edwards is an interesting one because uh, I think this kid is playing a lot more on most SEC teams, but because of the depth at the point guard position with the veteran, well, I call him veteran, just a sophomore, but Zakai Ziegler might as well be a veteran. Tyree Key, and then when Josiah Jordan James comes back in, that there's not much room there, but he is learning a lot in practice and a little bit of baptism by fire. A 2,200 point score at that. Thomas fouls out, second Cowboy to pick up five personals tonight. If you can't open your peanut butter jar or your pickles, this is the guy you, you want to ask at the free throw line. This is the strongest guy on the team. When's the last time you opened a jar of pickles? Well, usually I got to get a rag or something like I can't like I, I blame it on bad Are, grip, are you, you know? a pickle fan is my question. I'm just trying to describe things that might be hard to open. Yeah, and this would be a guy that could do that for you. So you refuse to commit to the Vlasic is what you're saying. You refuse yeah, to play right. pickles as a snack of choice. Yes. Bear with us, folks. Just three minutes. <laughs> Where do you stand on gherkins? Give us a break. Kind. We're doing our best. <laughs> Francois going behind the screen. Watching John Aiken on the uh, sideline for McNeese. I think they're going to run zipper here because he, he grabbed the zipper on his yeah. quarter zip and mind moving it up and down. I'm not the best sign stealer in the world, but I can figure <laughs> out well there. Of them. Yeah. I do not think it was to get the ball all the way on the other end of the court, though. And, you know, I, I don't care who the competition is. To hold a team. To 14 of 51 and 35 points with just a couple minutes to go is, is a heck of, of a feat. And I think Coach Aiken's going to look back at the end of the season and say, nobody made it tougher on us to score than the Tennessee Balls. We'll have a chance to face some other great teams, including number one Houston. But, week of Christmas. And I had a chance to talk to Tad Boyle, a Colorado head coach. He was at the Myrtle Beach Invitational right after their big win against Tennessee. That's a flex for you, okay? And and he said, uh, <laughs> I said, you know, what what do you think worked so well? He goes, look, there were some open shots that they just missed, but we knew that we could not score early in the shot clock. Uh -huh. Their defense was just way too solid. You've got to try to make them work and hope that they have a breakdown at some point during the course of the shot clock. DJ Edwards knocks down the three, the second of the season. And an offensive foul on Blackwell. Or probably it's on Donovan on day for the illegal screen. If you're still keeping score. Tennessee with 21 assists on 22 buckets tonight. They, they, we gave the stat earlier that Tennessee has one of the best assist rates in the country. And McNeese has the, lo the lowest defensive assist rate. Opponents assist on 72% of their buckets against the Cowboys. And 
That number is actually percentage going to go up after tonight. The score's important to some right now. Indeed. And a step on the sideline. Well, Tennessee was really sloppy in that first half. And I would they've got 11 turnovers now on the game. I, I got to think five or six of those were in the first five five minutes. So they, they've cleaned it up. More efficient on the offensive end. Still not a thing of beauty, but Rick Barnes will take it. Thirty five point difference here. With minute five to play. And an offensive foul. Charge to Shoemate, and he becomes the third Cowboy to foul out. You just got to be able to, if you're going to get past that first defender, you got to know the help's coming and be able to stop, pop, and shoot or make the next right decision as a pass. But Shoemate's had a frustrating evening, as have all the Cowboys, but he's a heck of a player. And again, this is a guy that was averaging 13 and 11 coming into the game. Tried for another reverse, and that'll put Tyree Key at the free throw line. Anything we haven't covered tonight, Dane? Um, let's see. You had lunch with any former coaches yeah. lately? Yeah, I've got my my uh, my consultant in Chattanooga, Coach Will Wade of LSU Tigers, now living in Chattanooga where he coached. Another one coming for gave me some tips Key. on how to uh, prepare against a pack line defense. <laughs> Double figures for Key and Tennessee able to empty the bench. Colin Coyne among others now on the floor. I thought we could get into Beth Haynes' departure from Channel 10. I really miss seeing her oh, on the television man. locally. I know you're a big fan. Round of applause. Jumper good for Blackwell. And if you had Beth Haynes on the bingo card along with Littons, congratulations. I've got one more. Kent Gilbert has enter entered the game, which was one of the predictions. Stats by Will. Warren has made in his terrific scouting of the opponent. Squeezes off a three. No hesitation from Gilbert. Love it. Foul jam. Tomei Walker, the freshman from Hyde Park, New York, finds his first bucket. Ten seconds left in the game. When do I get to see you again? Uh, Tuesday morning in Arkansas. I'll miss the uh, wonderful steak dinner you and our producer Randy will have on Monday night. Randall Heritage will be paying 76 40. A 36 point win for Tennessee.